Welcome into episode six of the North American Hockey League's podcast, Short Shifts. I'm Brandon Hofstra, joined by Vinny Paraselli. Happy late Thanksgiving to everybody. Uh, we are officially in the month of December, and um, no sight of snow yet. It was 80 degrees here in Texas yesterday. It's a little chilly today, 53, but um, yeah. Vinny, Thanksgiving in the books. How was it? Uh, Thanksgiving was good. Got the family together. Uh, saw my parents for the first time in quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, everything good. Right on. I didn't have my family in town. I uh, had Christian Larson, who I live with as well, who works for the league. His parents were in town, so shout out to them. Uh, made a nice bird on the uh, on the on the grill or the whatever you want to call it. Uh, I made my world famous deviled eggs that I've only made twice. Uh, the world uh, famous. Uh, 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 no, not on the grill. On the uh, what do you want to call it? Oven? The Traeger. Oh, okay. Smoker. Okay. Okay. So they smoked the bird. Gotcha. It's tasty. So shout out to Donovan, uh, Christian's dad, Donovan Larson, for making that. Um, awesome stuff. Good time. Went to a Stars game. Uh, worked Stop on Black crazy. Friday. What's that? A crazy Stars game. Crazy Stars game. Went to OT. Uh, there was a phantom hat trick, so we saw some hats fly onto the ice when Jason Robertson only scored two goals. But you saw a former NHL kind of how luck get knocked out and they still scored and it still counted, which is mm-hmm. kind of weird. Yeah. 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 It was a nutty game. So we were of course chirping our friends that are referees and giving them a hard time, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was a good weekend. And then right back at it, heading out to Philly for, for work here. Uh, we got an event uh, starting Friday. It's so going to be in Philadelphia. Um, good stuff all around. You want to hang out with the rebels, see the rebels, play the hat tricks maybe. That'd be nice. I don't know if we're going to be at the same rink as them, but you're nearby though. You're nearby. 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 Might mix a flyers game in there. We'll see what happens, but work first, fun. Second, uh, speaking of work, it's been, been crazy around the league. Um, I mean, gosh, we've, we've seen all sorts of stuff. Central division, the all out leader right there. Uh, the East Maryland continues to just roll, uh, Midwest has been tight and the South is pretty tight as well, but, um, Let's just pick it up, I guess, right away. Um, we'll we'll preface this too. We have a pretty good interview. Um, speaking of the Central Division, Austin leads. We have an ex Austin Bruin on uh, today's podcast. Um, Kyle McClellan, a good friend of mine. Um, awesome stuff from him. So we'll hear from him. Currently a Wisconsin Badger, but Austin they lead right now in the Central, fifteen three one and zero, thirty four points. They are eight one and one in their past ten games, but a split last weekend with North Iowa's. They lost on the twenty fifth three to two, and then an edged out win on the twenty sixth five to four. They're led by Austin Salani, twenty points this season with eight goals, twelve assists. He's right behind, and right behind him, pardon is uh, Walter Zacker, nineteen points, ten goals, nine assists. Defensively, James Gafredo. Uh, he has 16 points from the blue line, and Ethan Robertson in the pipes just been lights out, eight one. 0-2, oh, 1.52 goal against average and a .945 save percentage. So, Austin, they're rolling a, a little shaky last weekend, but uh, good stuff out of the Central Division. No, yeah, it's a whole Austin has been hot. Uh, you mentioned they are 8-1-1 one, one in the last 10 games. They had that split this weekend in North Iowa. But, I mean, Austin's kind of been quietly very, very good. I think because of how many, you know, they have uh, four overtime and shootout losses, so we kind of, it kind of gets mixed in there with those, you know, you know regular losses in the win. They don't – like they haven't had a giant streak. Obviously, eight one and one is really good, but like you know, you might have like three or four, like two back to back weekend sweeps. You get a loss here, you win maybe two or three more in a row. Like they haven't had that like really big streak that like grabs your attention. Right. Like we're going to talk about with a couple of teams later on here in the podcast, but like they've been playing extremely well. They've been getting points. Uh, it seemed like every weekend, and I know like a couple of weeks ago they had a big uh, series with Minot. They were tied up. Uh, Minot was up three nothing. Austin came back to win four three in a shootout. So I mean. They're rolling right now. Things are going their way. You mentioned a couple of the guys, uh, you know, Solani there, no relation to Timu, uh, leading to the points. Walter Zachary's finally healthy. Uh, he's been banged up the last couple of seasons, so it's good to see him at full strength contributing to that club. And the Central Division, I mean, a six-point lead right now for the Bruins, but, I mean, it, you know as well as I do, uh, that could go away very quickly if they don't keep up this pace. So uh, it's good now. they got to get through the holiday season, and then hopefully that second half they, you know, turn up another notch and continue to roll. 
Right underneath them is Minot with 28 points at second. Aberdeen, third place, 25 points. North Iowa, 25 points as well, so you could count them as a tie for third place right now. Uh, Bismarck, fifth place spot, 21 points. And St. Cloud, 18 points to round out the Central Division. We'll turn over now to the east side where Maryland continues to be untouchable, and I will do this, untouchable. Um, Last weekend, a complete upset as New Jersey comes in and sweeps Maryland on home ice. They took them down five to three and then turn around to take a win two to one. I actually caught the end of that game in the last minute and a half and it was absolute mayhem um, on the ice as Jersey stood tall to take that two, one win and the weekend sweep, which is crazy. But Maryland 41 points right now in the Eastern conference, a record of 25, one and Oh, 7-2-1-0 in their last 10 games played. And um, a little bit of a skid, like I said, as of late. They've been 0-2-1-0. Um, Christian Catalano, is, he's absolutely red hot. Uh, 34 points in twenty game, or with 20 goals, 14 assists, and he leads the NHL in scoring. Sean Kilcullen, the, uh, the D-man, 22 points, four goals, a lot of assists with 18. And uh, they've been splitting time with their goaltenders of Jack Winicky, 7-2 record. 1.90 goal against average, a .903 save percentage. And then William Hackinson, he's been taking most of the load, 13-2-1-0 record, 1.98 goal against average, and a .916 save percentage. But we say that they're red hot and it's they're untouchable. And if you look at the Eastern Conference, the, uh, granted they have a matchup this weekend, two games with the Northeast Generals who are right behind them at 27 points. I'm not a human calculator and I can't do math that well. I'm just built for talking, obviously. Um, 14 points. 14 point. 14 point difference. Look at that. There we go. So seven games, give or take, that that they would have to to lose and Northeast would have to win to get close to to tying them up. But uh your takeaway from the East in Maryland right now, Vinny. Well, I mean, I was ready to crown Maryland the division champion about uh, what four weeks ago. Uh, right. I was I was I was it was over. Yeah. I, I'm I don't I don't, I'm ready to bring the New Jersey Titans back in play. Mm-hmm. Uh, they won six in a row. They are over 500. They are 13 and 11. They have a championship pedigree. They have a really good coach. Yep. And given Maryland's history of second halves, um, I'm ready to bring the Titans back into, into play. Mm-hmm. Uh, Northeast, like you mentioned, is in second place. Uh, they are just too up and down for me. Uh, their last thing games are four, three, and three. So they're getting points, but they're not – winning you know more than they're losing they got four and six if you want to go that route right um johnstown i just don't think has it in them this season and then the, the bottom three teams that league or that division have shown us that they're not that quite that level yet so i would say right now it's a two-team race i think maryland you know deservedly so is the favorite i think that they are the best team they think they're the best player in the league christian Catalano. Right. so i mean yes it does maryland have this you know, giant lead, and we could say, yeah, they're probably going to be the one seed going to the playoffs. Sure, I'm, I'm willing to say that, yeah. you know, like you said, barring a you know, 15-point collapse, you know, in the next 30 games or so, like, that's that's a lot to do. Um, but the Titans, they're they're back. I think the Titans are officially back. I think we've not really talked about them enough, obviously, and I think that Coach Duramus has them, you know, off of that championship hangover, as we call yeah. it. Yeah, if we – dive into another team too in the Eastern Conference who hasn't been really spoken about and with a lot of returners and some veterans as well uh Maine Nordiques they are on a streak three three games uh nine and one in their past 10 games and they're just one point out of that fourth and final playoff spot if we if we break it down like that um right behind Johnstown who sits at at fourth place with 23 points so Maine I think Maine might be able to sneak in there too they keep their winning ways up um but like we said, it's um, it's the first place spot is set. Then after that, the next three is kind of up for grabs um, in a sense. We'll take a full look here. Uh, Northeast, second place, 27 points. Behind them, New Jersey by one point with 26. And then fourth, Johnstown, 23. Fifth place, 22 points is the main Nordiques. Then it'll round out with Philadelphia, 15 points, and Danbury uh, with six points. So you don't know. I mean – I think, I, I, in my I opinion, like I think Maine's going to pop up there. I like that you mentioned Maine. I think, I, I mean, Matt Pinchevsky is one of my favorite coaches in the North American Hockey League. One of the, one of the greatest dudes in the North American Hockey League. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got to kind of, well, I know you guys got to hang out with him a little bit more during the showcase uh, than I did this year, but he's a really great guy. And I think now he's got a full off season to finally get his guys and get, you know, the guys he wants into the systems installed. Yeah, I think 
like you said, I mean, do I think they're going to be favorites to come out of the East in, you know, May or April? I, I don't think so yet. We're not at that point, but right. nine and one last 10, you know, if you're, you're 11 and eight, I mean, you do a quick math, you're, you're, you're two and seven. So all right. of a sudden you kind of turn it around and, and I mean, they have games in hand. They only played 19 games. Everyone else, you know, 26, 24, 23. So they got games in hand. You win those games. All of a sudden you're, you're jumping right into, you know, the playoff picture and maybe you're getting home ice advantage in that first round. If you're, if you keep continuing to play this well. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm going to stand by my first statement. They had still two team race in New Jersey and, and uh, Maryland, but uh Maine, I, I I like the direction there. I like the veteran guys that they have. And, you know, maybe, and Pinch has been there before, maybe not as a head coach, but as an assistant, they got the Robertson Cup a few years ago. So, I mean, they, they've got the ingredients. We'll put it that way. Can they, are they the chef that can make it all work and put it all together? That remains to be seen, but they got the ingredients. Right. hundred percent. What's that? I feel like me cooking. Like cooking. I might have all the right stuff. I don't know if I'm actually going to do it all right, correctly. <laughs> right, right. Let's hop over to the Midwest side now. Um, a tight race over there. Fairbanks, 33 points. Minnesota, 32 points. Kenai, 31 points. Janesville, 30 points for the top four spots. And outside of that is Chippewa, who's out by just two, two points over there. And then underneath them is Wisconsin, 25. Anchorage, 23. And then Springfield, 20. So, honestly, these top, gosh, five or six teams really – could final out or get to the final four teams. It's just so tight over there. It's a, it's a back and forth a lot with, with the uh, two of the um, Midwest teams of Kenai and Fairbanks going back and forth. And then Minnesota kind of out of nowhere now on an eight or they're eight and two in their past 10, three game winning streak, Kenai, a three game win streak. Um, what do you got to say about the Midwest division right now, Vinny? Uh, flip a coin. Like every matchup, flip a coin, and you got better odds at like predicting that than in you know what what's going to happen on the ice because like Anchorage and Fairbanks seemingly every, like split every time they play, mm-hmm. and you know Anchorage is in seventh place out of eight, which in Fairbanks is in first. Um, you know, like you said, Minnesota's hot right now. Kenai just continues to keep playing strong hockey. Janesville had a nice little run in there for quite a bit. Like you could just pick, you know you can pick each team. And give three reasons why they will be first place. You can say three reasons why they won't make the playoffs at all. Like it's so tight, like you said. And really, it's going to come down to who comes out of that holiday break. I think in the best shape. Yep. Like, that holiday break, there's going to be like a, I think it's a ten day layoff. Where there's no NHL games between you know December twenty twentieth and 29th, whatever the dates are. But you know, kids are going to go home. They're going to go see their families. Are they going to stay in shape? Are they going to you know? Are they going to come back still hungry? Like, you know, it's so many factors that go into all this. And then who's going to lose guys to, the, you know, different leagues, USHL? Will there be any guys that commit to college and play the second half in college? Like, right. so many factors that will go into this division race that, I mean, it, Wisconsin, where it was kind of a bottom feeder for a bit, they've won four in a row. And their goaltenders, you know, I think, well, we're not going to, I'm not going to give away a spoiler, but we know who is going to win a certain thing. But it might be out by the time this comes out. It might not be. We'll find out. Yeah, but exactly. they're hot. They're hot right now. So who's going to get hot in January and February, and maybe especially March? Like that's what's going to decide it. And you know, you got those trips to Alaska. Those are grind up teams. You know, you got to go up there for two full weeks, and you're living in a hotel, and you you're not able to, to go to get you know eat food maybe whenever you want or be on a routine. Like it's going to be, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. It's a grind. It is totally a grind. So we'll keep our eyes on that and obviously keep everybody um, up to speed with what's going on in the, in the Midwest. Uh, right over now, South Division, another tight spot. Oklahoma and Lone Star back and forth for that first place spot. Oklahoma 17-2-0-1, 35 points. They are 9-0-0-1 in their past 10 games, and they are on an unreal 13-game point streak. So they are 12-0-0-1 streaking right now uh lone star right behind them 34 wow. points uh 15 2 1 and 1 record they are 7 1 1 and 1 in their past 10 games played so i mean we've talked about it before lone star playing lights out I mean, they had a little bit of a tough weekend i believe last weekend but um and oklahoma just continuing to move in the right direction they win last week in a sweep over odessa uh 6 to 0 then 5 to 3 and then we'll look at um Lone Star as well last weekend getting getting or actually they won last weekend pardon me um two to zero over Amarillo and then 
four to two over Amarillo, but it continues to be tight with those two teams in the South. Yeah, and I think uh, they only played each other one time. Lone Star won that game two to one. Uh, I'm interested to see future head to head games because uh, right now Oklahoma is the highest team in the league. Like you said, you mentioned the 13 game point streak. Um, they had a very late home opener, and they are nine zero at home. They have yeah. not lost a game in, in the state of Oklahoma yet. So, uh, what that means is that that positioning with Lone Star to get home ice advantage for the playoffs is going to be a you know a dog fight mm-hmm. that they're going to want to really push for and win because I mean you don't want to go shoebox and have to play three out of five games there. You want to be at home in front of what I gather to be a very rowdy crowd in Oklahoma. It looks like an absolute blast. Right. So definitely um, the people in Oklahoma know how to uh, show off some junior hockey and just create an amazing atmosphere to play your junior career. And the South does a very good job at that as a whole. Oklahoma, not not just being new. And it's a very, from what I've seen, it's a smaller arena. So you got everyone can kind of condensed in there right on top of you. And I mean, they had that, I believe the home opener where they were down, you know, that whole thing weekend, they were down big to Shreveport in the third period, came back, scored like three goals in the third, won it over time, and the crowd went bananas, and there was, you know, hundreds of people there. Yeah, yeah. Even, absolutely. Even thousand points. But, yeah, that, I think, the home ice advantage is going to be a big thing. I mean, looking at just the home home records for some of these teams, Lone Star 10, uh, 1-1-1 at home, Oklahoma 9-0, and New Mexico 9-1. and um, it's going to be what, how many of those teams can have success on the road as well. Obviously that's going to separate them and get them those points they need to get a home ice. Cause there's, that's three teams. Only two are going to have home ice in the first round. Right. And I'm not, I'm not calling the division race over. I'm not saying those three teams are locked in the playoffs, but how can you argue that right now they're the hottest teams in the league and maybe, you know, one of, some of the best teams in the league. Mm-hmm. So you've seen consistently year after year, the South division, you, you may have a South division. You're a loaded team. Like there's no doubt about it. And if we take a look at the the top uh, goalies, too, in the NHL, Arthur Smith of Lone Star leads the league right now as the number one goalie overall. Then at third place is Oklahoma's goalie of Daniel Duris. Then you hop down to fourth place, back up at Lone Star, William Graham's fourth place. Then you hop down to seventh place, Cameron Corpy for Oklahoma. So you got, I mean, seven, like four of the best goalies in the league right now fighting in that in that Southern division. Well, and if you look at the just total goals allowed, Lone Star has allowed 35 goals in 20 games. Oklahoma has allowed 36. So, I mean, that goes to your point, Arthur Smith and Daniel Durris. Mm-hmm. The difference right now is that Oklahoma, in those 20 games, has scored 89 goals, the second most in the league, while Lone Star, uh, I got to scroll down a bit to find it, 21st at 59. Playoff hockey because that's what it's going to come down to with both teams in the playoffs. Playoff hockey is different. Will be as run and gun as Oklahoma is making it out to be right now? I'm not sure. Like, I think, you know, Lone Star, the way they play the full season is playoff hockey. It's the style you need to have in the playoffs. They play a defensive game. They don't give you many opportunities, and you got to capitalize on the ones you do get. Right. And then we saw last year in New Mexico's game five with them. They won, they Lone Star lost one nothing. Yeah. And New Mexico, New Mexico probably got – three, four, maybe five chances in the entire game, and they made one count, and that's it. That's all I needed. Yep. But will Lone Star be able to score enough against Oklahoma? Actually, I reverse that. Will Oklahoma be able to score enough against Lone Star when you get into those high-pressure, high-intensity games that have that playoff feel, right? So I think you know, offense disappears in the playoffs. The refs put the whistles away. You know, it, it, it's not good. I don't think it's good for the game. But that, you know, I'm in, the, I'm in the minority there, so – We'll have to see. I think it's going to be a – I want to see these two teams play again in the regular season, though. That'll be, that'll be a highlighted series for sure. 100%. And speaking of offense, Oklahoma with Hunter Jones, the seventh top scorer in the NHL, 25 points. Uh, you go down a hair to 12th place with Brandon Will- Brendan Williams, sorry, with 23. And within the top 20, you don't see a single player from Lone Star. So it could be a, a factor as well going, like you said. Oklahoma's got – Oklahoma's got experience. Uh, William Lawson by is a third year guy. Um, Owen Baumgartner is a third year guy. Uh, they, 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 they've got experience. And I think that's going to help them in the NIH. I know Lone Star's probably got some as well, but I mean, three years in the NHL in the South division, especially with Lawson body and Baumgartner, just, I mean, if that's not battle tested, I don't know what it is. Right. Right. You know, so it's going to be, it's going to be a heck of a, uh, a, a race to watch and fold here in the next couple months. It's weird. Cause we're only in December. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like, you know, like we're 
almost halfway through the season and like not much, like you don't know what's going to happen. Like we know the East is, we kind of know who's top dog there, but everywhere else, I mean, good luck. Cause yeah. we've, we like, what I think it was a couple weeks ago. We we're like, Oh yeah, this like, you know, off the showcase, North Iowa had three straight shutouts. And we're like, Oh man, this team is going to be really, really good. And they've kind of fallen off and they're kind of battling for a playoff spot. We, you know, we're the Titans. We're like, Oh, they're dead. Like they've lost their first six games. They're dead. Now they've won six around their back. Like, all a matter of how hot you can get at the right time. Exactly. Exactly. Well, there goes our wrap right now of the standings in the NAHL. Um, we mentioned it before we started the uh, the little recap of the divisions that we have a special guest today. Uh, Kyle McClellan, an NAPHL alumni, an NAHL alumni, played at Mercyhurst for two seasons, now currently a Wisconsin Badger. So we're going to toss it over to Kyle, uh, Kyle McClellan right here. Welcome back. This guest started his career playing with the Car Shield AAA organizations with two seasons with the 16Us and two seasons with the 18U squad. Uh, then he went to the NAHL where he played 44 games in net with the Austin Bruins, recording a 2.31 goal against average and a .915 save percentage. He saw four starts in the Robertson Cup playoffs. He then went to the USHL and played a season for the Omaha Lancers. In his collegiate career, he's currently in his third year of college. He played two years and 33 games for Mercyhurst University. Then over the summer, entered the transfer portal and now is a Wisconsin Badger. We want to welcome two short shifts. My friend, Kyle McClellan. Kyle, thanks for joining us, buddy. How are things over in uh, in Madison, Wisconsin? Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, it's definitely been a blast so far, and I'm excited to be here. It's been a it's been a crazy season for you, and obviously um a, a crazy off season. But we'll kind of get into that as we go here uh, in this interview with you. But uh, first off, just talk about Wisconsin, how it is being there, and a little little different, I'm guessing, and a little bit of a bigger school compared to uh, Mercyhurst. Yeah, no, it's a it's a bigger school so far. Uh, I think it's thirty five hundred to forty thousand, forty five thousand people. So it's a bit of a jump. Um, and then, I mean, everything here is just professional hockey. I mean, you look at the rink, you look at the facilities. Um, caught my eye right away, and I'm glad to be here. And that's the Cole Center, right? You guys play out of? Yeah. Okay. So sure. basketball. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. So yeah, you probably went from a school of what about thir- maybe thirteen thousand at Mercyhurst or five. Thirty five hundred. Holy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, so uh, I went to a Big Ten school as well for a while, um, and I remember transferring from uh, a Big Twelve school, but still on the same like caliber of like how big the classes were. But um, I remember my first time walking into one of those lecture halls that's like as big as a movie theater with like five hundred kids in there. I'm guessing you didn't see something like that at Mercyhurst. Yeah, no, there were smaller classes, which obviously helped. I think it was like twenty, twenty five kids, but I mean, like those smaller classes definitely helped. Uh, Kyle, let's just get into your hockey career. Like, tell us about the beginnings, how you got involved in the game, maybe who got you involved in the game, and you know what led you to becoming a goalie. Because obviously, um, you know, a lot of parents have to see their kids score goals, and not you know, goalie parents have a rock. Let's be honest. Yeah, um, I guess it would have to be just my dad and my mom when I was growing up. I started skating when I was like three or four. I think I started to want to be a goalie when I was eight, maybe nine. Um, I just saw the pads and the helmet and kind of got an obsession with it. And ever since then, it's been the gear that's kind of driven me to be a goalie. You are from St. Louis. Then you played uh, St. Louis Selects, which is now Car Shield AAA, but um, a team that's still in our umbrella of of leagues here uh, with the North American Hockey League. But Talk about your experiences playing 16 U's there. You played a little bit of high school. Um, I'm not sure if it was Manchester, somewhere in Manchester or Chesterfield, but uh, four seasons total with Carshield AAA. Just talk about the 16s and going into the 18s and how 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 the league was. Yeah, my first year with them was first year 16s. I got hurt, so I was out for most of the year, but came back the following three. Uh, just the exposure that you get through the showcases and – Everything that they have to offer is only setting you up for success. So um, I'm glad that I went that route, and uh, it's worked out for me. Where would you say, I mean, obviously with the PHL, you get to kind of travel all, all over the place. What was your favorite spot to go to, would you say? Uh, it's going to have to be Blaine, Minnesota. 
those were the bigger showcases. So, but yeah, it's got to be the Blade watching the Null teams. Um, it kind of gives you that want and that that desire to continue playing and get better every day. Um, because I know when I was watching the Null games, I was always like, I want to play in that league. So obviously that the showcase, which we're getting ready to head up there um, here in a few weeks in uh, Minnesota and Blaine, actually. Um, talk about that. Um, did you did you talk to some college uh, scouts while you were there in your 16s or 18s? And did you talk to some N.A. coaches as well to kind of make yourself on the radar? And there is a uh, all star game, I believe there always is. And were you a part of that? Um, I was not a part of the all star game until the my last season 18s um but yeah i talked to a few null teams i think it was my last year 18s when i kind of really um had a good year i talked to aberdeen austin and there might have been a few others but it wasn't until the second half where i uh, started talking to those teams what was like the deciding factor like you said you had a couple you talked to a couple different teams like what what was it about Austin that made you kind of go there and go, I'm going to, you know, this is the place where I want to be at. Um, I had a, I had a buddy that was there. So I was in contact with him I'm asking him how he liked it. And then one of my other teammates, actually, we both ended up signing to Austin together. Um, we both just kind of saw that it fit best for us. So that was kind of why I, I decided to go there. So let's talk about your time in Austin. Obviously, you're a St. Louis kid, and you find yourself in a kind of small town, Minnesota. I believe it's the spam capital of the world, too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It did you ever go to the spam museum? Uh, I've, I don't believe. No, I did not. Are you a fan of spam now? No. <laughs> it smells <laughs> awful. <laughs> let's just. I mean, obviously. Great hockey up there, good staff, all sorts of awesome stuff. You guys found yourselves in the playoffs. Um, you played four games in the postseason, but 44 in the regular season. So you are pretty much the main go-to guy in between the pipes there in Austin. Just talk about that team and that season and then going into the postseason where you guys inevitably lost to, um, excuse me, Aberdeen, who won the whole thing. But just talk about that experience and how it got you ready for the next steps of going to collegiate hockey. Yeah, the, kind of like I said, the exposure um, to colleges and, I mean, they treat you like professionals. I mean, you have skates every day, workouts, you have morning skates. It's not like AAA hockey anymore. It's the real deal. Yeah. Um, you know, like coaches are always good there. Um, I had Steve Howard and he was unbelievable. I had a goalie coach, Nick Lair. I don't think he's still there, but he was an awesome mentor. Yeah. So, I mean, they then all develops you well and they give you everything that you need to succeed. And that's such a division. I mean, all we hear about is how basically everybody hates each other. Yeah. Um, it, it, was that the feeling you got? And what team would you say that you want to make sure you use? We're, we're trying to like pitch a shot on every night. Uh, I don't know who I didn't like the most, but I know we didn't like playing against Aberdeen. They were always tough to play against, obviously. Especially my year, they were really good. So we would always run into them and – It'd always be a good game, but I'd have to say Aberdeen. <laughs> the next season, you find yourself in Omaha. Um, did you you started the season with Sioux Falls, right, or did you start the season up in um, in Austin? I got drafted by Sioux Falls, and then I got traded to Omaha right before the showcase. Okay, so then obviously you came to the showcase in uh, Pittsburgh, played, uh, spent the whole season there in Omaha, and that was. COVID year too, I believe, right? Yeah, COVID ended that year, yeah. Okay, so a good-looking team that Omaha had that year and then aged out now and then go, moving on to Mercyhurst. So talk about that, your first season at Mercyhurst. You're kind of the backup goalie that year, correct? Obviously, it's a transition, as it is everywhere. Like, I'm going through it right now. Um, but you just kind of got to stick with it and be ready when it's your turn. Um, I had a good goalie partner there, so I made it easy just every day at the rink. Just loved being there. Um, but yeah, no, uh, when it was my shot, I was ready and just kind of prepared the same way every game, regardless if I was playing or not. So when I got my shot, I, I was ready for it. So that first season, six games played, then you go into your sophomore year, 27 games. So the main guy in between the pipes, um, talk about that season too. Uh, you guys, you yourself in between the pipes, 12, 13, and two. 
uh, 2.56 goal against average and a 0.932 save percentage, but having more confidence, learning what college hockey is about, being a sophomore coming in there, learning from the year before, being a freshman with a guy in front of you, but obviously still kind of sharing the net with him a little bit, but just talk about that second year compared to the first. Yeah, we continue to split games the whole first half, kind of like we were my freshman year a little bit near the end. We, uh, I kind of got this two starts at the second half and kind of just went with it there. But having that confidence being the second, like being back my second year, um, we kind of got on a roll second half and just continued to run with it. So I think that was the biggest thing, which is knowing that I had confidence in myself, the team had confidence in me, and I had confidence in them. Right. Kyle, you talked about the transitions, like going up to each level and whatnot. What's the biggest transition for a goalie, especially going from junior hockey to collegiate hockey? Because you said how, you know, youth hockey going to the, you know, to the NA was, you know, you're, there's more in skates, it's a more professional atmosphere kind of thing. What's the biggest change that you saw going to the college game? Because, I mean, everyone's got to do the same thing at that point. Yeah, no, it's definitely just the IQ. I mean, like one thing that I struggled with was the like the speed. Like you got to catch up to the speed. Everyone does the same thing. It's all morning skates, workouts. Everyone's doing exactly the same thing. But it's just how fast the game is played and, and how smart the players are. They know how to wait a little bit longer. They make plays quicker. Right. It's just all the little things that kind of add up and make it a jump. It's like each level you go to, the time and space gets smaller and smaller yeah. and smaller. Grow, growing up in St. Louis and then playing Karsha AAA, then going to Austin, playing in the NAHL, playing in Omaha with the Lancers, uh, then playing mm -hmm. at Mercyhurst. How many buddies do you have that you're playing against or playing with from any of those teams and even your hometown? Yeah, it seems like I, every time I play against some team, I always know someone on the other team. It's nice to say hi to them. Regardless, if I, I don't even talk to them anymore as much. Yeah. Just whenever I'm in town, I'll say, hey, how's it going? Meet up with them either before or after the game. And it's nice to have, like, those friendships and connections. And, yeah, no, it's been a blast over the years meeting new people and getting all those friends. All right. We got to talk about the summer, the, the transfer portal, all that stuff. It's kind of new. Obviously, like, you know, back in the day, you had to sit out a year. And now you just kind of jump ship. and Yeah. Ship. What – I guess went into that decision, and then what was that process like? Because obviously it's a brand, it's it's a newer thing. Not a lot of kids really know about it, and maybe you know they might be a little afraid to you know test the waters a little bit. What was that process like for you? I my dream was always to play Big Ten and in the NHL. So I grew up watching Michigan, Notre Dame, Michigan State, going to those games every year. I uh, I had a really good year last the past two years. I thought that. Uh, it was time for me to make a jump and go to a a bigger program and hopefully continue my success. Um, so I, I entered the portal and I was really successful in the portal. I talked to a lot of good teams and coaches. It just kind of came down to where I thought fit, the fit was right for me and and where my heart was, and that ended up being at Wisconsin. But you, you can you can go anywhere. Uh, and not sit out with one year if you have your COVID year, I believe. Mm -hmm. But I'm not entirely sure. I don't – there's so many different little rules. And, like, my buddy thought he had an extra year when he doesn't because he didn't participate in the COVID. I don't – it's – Some stipulations all over the place. Yeah, I don't understand it. But yeah, as far as it goes for me, yeah, I had one-time transfer, and then I still have another COVID year on top, I guess. So back to the summer a little bit. Uh, you got an invite to the Minnesota Wilds camp. Um, you've been talking about professional levels as you moved up every level of hockey. And then you found yourself at the top of the top in the NHL at the uh, at the camp there. But talk about that experience. Obviously, you're a, a phony blues fan. So it must have been kind of kind of weird to be in enemy territory, if you will. Yeah, I am. A <laughs> you know, I had to take that stab at you. <laughs> Coming from the bandwagon himself. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so obviously I'm a Blues fan, but when it comes to that level, I mean, you're going to sign with whoever it is, and no matter what, you're there to play professional hockey. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a good experience. And like I said about the Napple showcases, it just all that exposure, and 
you get to see what they go through on a daily basis, like their meals, their workouts. You kind of do everything that they do along with like the team bonding. Yeah. So it was a good experience. I had a blast and hopefully uh, things work out in the future as far as professional hockey. Did they take you guys to like a twins game or anything like that? Or did you guys team bonding? What'd you guys do? We did axe throwing, go karts, and then we did like a little sand volleyball. Oh, fun. Uh, by the beach or by like one of the lakes, which was pretty nice. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, plenty, they got plenty of those. So, yeah. 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 That's pretty. I mean, man. So, obviously, the end goal is get to the NHL. Like you said, there's no team, like any team can come and say, hey, we want to sign you. You're probably going to be like, yeah, I'm in. Like, let's go. Yeah. That's like the goal. What would it mean, though? I mean, I don't know what Bennington's contract is. I don't know. I don't know the other goalie for St. Louis is. And I just saw him the other day. Thomas but, Thomas I mean, Chris. How, how? Just that up, Brando. Oh yeah, I had yeah, elite prospects. I had to Google. I had to be ready. Hey, don't <laughs> forget we're we're in the alumni suite. You peasant, go back down to the three hundred. <laughs> that that was a uh, that was a good time though. Oh, I was I was fighting I was fighting an illness though, but uh, we were uh, lost a lot of money on that game. <laughs> I did too at the, at the uh, souvenir store. <laughs> uh, those those retro reverses, man. You just you. We were literally sitting waiting for him to get out of the team store so we can go to the seats. We're standing there, just drinks in hand, just hanging out. Like we're like, hey, we're gonna have a good time. Not here sitting waiting for Brandon to buy a jersey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, he had to like try different sizes on because he doesn't know which size he is. It was, it was a mess. I'm 46, if anybody wants to buy one for me. Why didn't you just order it online? Because I was there. It was the first night they wore it. I had to do it there. I got a few hats, got a jersey. I right, did get a few hats too. Yeah. So whatever. First time a blues game. Yeah, I had to let everybody know. <laughs> Didn't post on the Instagram like you would, but it's whatever. <laughs> but, but anyway, back, back to my original question: What would that mean, though, for you to be able to say, you know, you could potentially play for the St. Louis Blues in your hometown, all your family and friends there? Like, what kind of moment would that be? Like, you think? Yeah, no, that'd be a dream come true. I think it's mostly like family and friends, like being able to see me. That was like another thing. Um, like they've already been up here a few times at Wisconsin, so it's nice to be able to play in front of them again after a few years. So it's like my biggest thing. Hometown hero, Pat Maroon 2.0. Yeah, I hope so. Kyle, so a big weekend for the Badgers coming up. You guys got Wisconsin, or excuse me, you guys are at Wisconsin. You guys have Michigan at home, and then next weekend you got the Golden Gophers. Um Talk about your mentality coming up for these next two huge weekends for you guys, taking on some top, what are they, top five teams? Yeah, I think they're two and three or three. I don't know, they're top five. But uh, we're, like our thing is going into it is it doesn't matter who we're playing. We got to play the same way that we have been. Obviously, those playing against those teams are always fun. Uh, they're some of the best teams in the country, obviously, right now. But that doesn't mean we're not. Uh, so we got to have that mindset going into it, and we're all excited for it. What do they call the fans there at the Cole Center? Or uh, the Crease Creatures. The Crease Creatures. Is a good buzzing in there? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's super cool. Uh, anything else you want to add, Vinny? Uh, I was just going to, I guess, if you can, in a timely manner, what's the rowdiest environment you've been in in juniors and then the rowdiest one you've been in in college? Ooh. Juniors is maybe... Do NA and USHL. NA is Aberdeen, one hundred percent Aberdeen. I hated playing there. Their fans are crazy. I'm getting yelled at from like up top. I'm getting yelled at between like the glass or whatever, like yeah, the yeah. Little area between the glass. I'm getting yelled at by parents. <laughs> I'm, just like, I'm just trying to play hockey. Like uh, the USHL has got to be Omaha or Des Moines was. Des Moines, Des Moines is brutal. Uh, they're crazy because you're yeah. standing outside the locker room and I'm just getting passed and yelled at. <laughs> yeah, you're like in there in the concourse. Yeah, I'm just like every I'm like by the food set, like the yeah. food concession stand. Yeah, it's like, nuts. Uh, but Omaha always got packed. Fargo yeah. was fun. And then for college, I'm trying to think. I mean, Big Ten, obviously, like, having the band and stuff mm-hmm. is crazy and just makes it seem like such a cool environment. Yeah. 
Are you guys playing at Minnesota next week? Yeah. That'll be rowdy. That'll I've heard that that's a pretty big rivalry in that all. Oh yeah. That Yogi. and then Penn State Burger always tells me that Penn State is always like, packing it. The so. white out and stuff there because they they like always were white there, don't they? For for college hockey games, I think there's always one game a year that's like they're white out, and I think they did it against Michigan. A few okay. weeks ago. That's, yeah, it's, ho- it's hockey valley. Come on, they're yeah. they're a newer program. They kind of got that fan base in there. Like Pagula bought you know the whole rank. Like they got money. It's all good there. Everything's great. Events. They're kind of like good now. Yeah. Kyle, once again, thanks for stopping on, man. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, good luck at Wisconsin. Obviously, you and I are in touch all the time, but uh, good luck this weekend. Good luck next weekend. Um, thanks again. We really appreciate it, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. We want to thank Kyle again for swinging in and taking some time out of his day uh, to talk with us. Really cool uh, hearing his story, making his way from uh, the NAPHL, talking about um, the showcase, how cool that is. Uh, for players, and I guess hearing that firsthand too from a player who's had success from that is awesome. Um, and then his time in the in the NHL now, a collegiate hockey player. So, uh, anything you want to take away from that, Vinny? Uh, I I learned that he has a lot more free time on his hands than I thought. If he's playing as much Call of Duty as he mentioned, <laughs> <laughs> not playing with me at all, never, never. Um, speaking of uh, cool stuff, I guess Call of Duty's cool. Um, we got merch now officially on our website. Here, I'm gonna hold it up real quick. Yeah, model that banner, banner white modeling job. Yeah, that, there it is, the short shift T-shirt. There's the back of it. Got a big old logo. Got the front on there for I, I believe Brandon designed those himself. That 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 says yes. As I don't know where his microphone's gone. I think he's just gonna he's gonna let me do this. Um, so we got the the black T with the big logo on the back. We have the smaller abbreviated logo on the front left side. Uh, short shifts. That is the name of the podcast because we are just you know. We're not good enough to get, you know, a full long shift in there. We just get, you know, we get out there for 30 seconds. We try to, you know, get the puck out of the zone and that's about it. That's all we're good for. Do your thing. Yeah. Um, just don't give up any goals. Just exactly. So, line, get energy line. Good. Get out there. Done. Just locker room guys. But you can get that on our website, shop.nahl.com. We do have a promo code now officially for 10% off your purchase. Anything you'd like on the shop. Holiday season officially starting today, December 1st. So use that promo code and it is short shifts, not one word, short space shifts. Um, I tried all caps. It worked. So give that a shot. Um, Again, shop.nahl.com for all of your merchandise and Christmas gifts, Hanukkah, what have you, any holiday gift you need uh, right there on shop.nahl.com again 10% off coupon short shifts check it out um episode six in the books anything you need to add Vinny? oh man december december is uh it's a big month uh yep. there's not there's not that many games you get the holidays coming up our guys kind of not i don't want to say tossing the towel but you know get, you know you get, you've gotten you've been out on the road for a couple months you're just itching to get back home mm-hmm. see the folks for a little bit but there's business you can take care of. Who will take care of business over the next three weeks? Yep. Big one. And then we got the uh, NA3HL showcase and a PHL showcase two up in Blaine. That'll go right into Christmas break. So uh, we'll try to get another episode out before Christmas. Um, but yeah, episode six in the book. Shout out Kyle McClellan. Thanks for, for hopping on uh, again. Shop shop.nahl.com. Check out the new merch right here. Boom, boom, boom. Vinny's got it on too. We might get some hats in the works too. So all that stuff. Uh, shop a bucket. At NAP, a bucket for sure. What's that? Use a bucket for sure. A bucket hat or just a hat? Just a hat. Just a hat. Just a hat. Yeah, we'll go with just a hat. Something like something like this. You know, whatever. All right. Thanks everybody for tuning in again. Episode six. And we'll catch you in a few weeks.